I mean, this is a, a pretty pretty uh, emotional day here. This is incredible news uh, for you as, as the coach and the man. Kind of probably devastating for the team. It's, it's just the way it always works out. But how exciting is this opportunity? Yeah, look, I think the opportunity is very exciting for me and my family and for my career. I think uh, it goes without saying just how much I've loved every second of my time at the Rowdies and there's still so much to achieve for this club. Um, but I think it's the right time for me to try and try this opportunity. And you say devastating, like the reason there's so much emotion, I think, is just because everyone's given so much. Um, and when you say what makes it actually tougher is the fact that people are so supportive of 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 my decision and so kind of thankful for everything that we've done together. And that actually just makes it harder for me. <laughs> it's. Uh, it Unfortunately, the calendars in the U.S. and Europe don't mesh. This happened. I remember Marcel yeah. going to Germany to, to lead yeah. a team uh, in the mid-season. So, how difficult is it, not just emotionally, but but to get, mentally leave these guys in good shape? But now you got to prepare a team to begin its new season. I'm a great believer. There's never a good time for something that's a big change as this. But I'm pleased to be leaving the club. I think in fantastic shape. They're at top of the Eastern standings. Um, we hope to extend that tomorrow, uh, Saturday night, sorry. Um, I think behind the scenes, the training ground that we're here at, like, I think we've got two or three guys injured right now that are going to make the squad better for whoever inherits it. Um, so I, I, I think there's only success in the future for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Everything's set up for that. That's because they're good owners, they're great owners actually, and, and great people behind the scenes. So as we've always said to the team, it's always about more than one person, and that includes the head coach. Yeah, I think um, when I first took the job, that was my aim. My, my, my aim every day was just to try and make the club better, you know, and it was step by step, and sometimes it was a backward step. Um, but again, it wasn't just me, it was, it was multiple people, like me and Lee Cohen, uh, worked tirelessly together, Nico Castillo since he came back. You know, my, my staff, like Pete Calabrese and Stuart Dobson have been here like, the whole time I've been a coach, and like, they may not get their name in the, in the social media or the press as much, but they've been equally as important at why we're, why we're here and why we've got a team that's top level. So it will continue to be that way. And um, as I say, I'm going to watch from afar. But oh yeah, I'll certainly be proud. I'll be proud of my time at the club and hope that I can come back in the future to to watch and take it in as a fan. A lot of us remember you playing, and then a week later you're coaching. Uh, was, was coaching always something you had kind of in your mind, even back then, or has this? Are you standing in a spot right now that you never imagined a decade ago? This um, funny, I mentioned to Jake like this period, this last three or four days reminds me of that time. It was a whirlwind. Couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, and that's not normal for me. As I, I can sleep well, regardless of what's going on. Um, so it's been a, it's been a, it's been a turbulent time. But honestly, Dan, like, yeah, I, I could because I always felt that I was a, I'm not, I'm not a player that now coaches, right? I'm a coach that played. Um, I always had my mindset on being a coach. I always felt that I could have an even bigger impact as a coach than I ever did as a player, and um, that's part of why I need to take this opportunity because I think I, I think I've got a lot to try and achieve um, in a hopefully a long coaching career, and I just think this will be a step forward towards that. When did this? Uh... Sunday was the first time that I really realised that this is a legitimate, potentially a legitimate opportunity. Um, and it just, as I say, snowballed so fast, so fast from there. Um, I hate, yesterday was tough enough, but I think the fact that it did come as such a shock to everyone because there's been no leaks, there's been no um, whispers, um, which is good and bad because it doesn't prepare anyone for this. But by the same token, I think the fact that it ha happened so quickly you know, just it's like a shock to the system, but then now we get ready for Saturday night. What, uh, what is Barnsley getting here? You, you're, you know exactly what you're getting into, a, a fan base that they want promotion, everybody's hopeful this time of year. So what, what is Barnsley getting from a coach that has shown that he can build a program from the ground up? I think they'll get a lot of passion and intensity, and I think that's a club that should relate well to that. They've, their fans are passionate, they're demanding because um, football's their life. But um, I think, you know, again, they'll get someone that gives it their all. And I think that's all the Rowdy's fans asked. 
was for a team that gave it their all, and that's kind of my job is to go there and build that. And obviously, there's lots of different ways to do it, Dan. But I think this experience will stand me in good stead. And I've said to a few of the players that the players that I coach in the, the future will be held to high standards because these guys have been demanded a lot of, and um, they've they've roasted every challenge. And um, so I'm excited about that. You have to remind yourself that. Um, I'll be I'll be made well aware of that probably every week, um, and that's part of the. I have to say it, that's part of the reason. I think if there was releg relegation and promotion, um, we'd be maybe standing in a totally different conversation. And I think that's part of, I think this is an MLS club in all but name. And I see other MLS clubs that I don't think are as well run uh, because of their owners and because of their staff. Um, that's not a knock, that's just a fact. I think like we do everything to a top, top level as we can do. And um, unfortunately there is that ceiling. But the games, in my time here, the difference is, so vast, you know, in 2016 there were some days I wondered if I'd made the right decision. When you're playing at like Lockhart Stadium in front of 20 people, um, and two months earlier you'd been playing at Old Trafford, you're kind of questioning it, but that was maybe the only time. Uh, I think ever since then things have moved on, the club's moved on, and uh, I think, in, again, there's a lot of exciting things in the landscape for, for US soccer. It was Yesterday was worse because I told the players yesterday because I had to tell them to their face. I was really concerned about any news breaking and not coming from me. It's tough enough, but I always try and have the difficult conversations face to face. Today was a bit better because I think the news has sunk in a little bit more and I'm able to just say thanks. Just I just want to be sincere in that to them, like that, how thankful I am, because I've got this opportunity because of them.